Welcome. Thank you for joining us for Starbird's Tech 10 Tuesdays. Uh, Thanksgiving is just a couple of weeks away, and we are grateful to have you with us as we continue to explore Maxima's industry and add-on solutions. Last week, we talked about Maximo for utilities. This week, we're going to dive into Maximo Spatial. Um, after that, we will be looking at uh, Scheduler and then HSE. Of course, all of our sessions are recorded, so if you miss any of them, you're free to go back and watch them as replays um, and rewatch them again, uh, share them with others, et cetera. So my name is Amy Tatum, and I've been working with Maximo for over 20 years, mostly in the utilities space. I'm an electrical engineer turned IT consultant and spent the first part of my career working in the operations and planning departments of two different electric utilities. Since starting my Maximo journey, I've done a lot of work with utility clients, and Maximo Spatial is something that we often encounter in our implementations. Spatial is well known in the utility space, and we noted last week in our Tech 10, hosted by Amy Terry, that Spatial is included in the Maximo for Utilities industry solution. Maximo Spatial provides a solution that embeds your Esri GIS maps into the Maximo user interface and allows for a seamless integration of data between Maximo and Esri using Esri feature services and the Maximo integration framework. Unlike a synchronization tool, Maximo Spatial gives you visualization of that GIS data without having to replicate it. It can be queried, displayed, and edited from Maximo based on your configurations and security. Some of the key features of Maximo Spatial are just that it brings location awareness to your Maximo assets. Um, you, it gives you the ability to view your linear assets in a spatial map. And most importantly, it just gives you increased visibility of your data. Since everyone is pretty familiar with the traditional use cases of spatial, today in our Tech 10, we wanted to go a little bit beyond the common pipes and wires view and delve into some other use cases and ideas for spatial and integrations with Esri. So we're gonna start with a building management concept. Um, interior spaces, floors, and layouts are generally considered to be the purview of a BIM-based solution, ingesting a 3D model through your BIM software into Maximo. But a lot of our clients have older buildings that don't have a BIM model. Uh, what do you do then? If you've got two-dimensional floor plans and you can bring those into GIS layers, you can still make use of that data, and a map-based solution is still relevant not just for finding locations to write service requests and work orders, but to query historical and existing work order data for dispatching or failure analysis. So I'm gonna show an example of a client that has map layers that holds the floor plans and room numbers of the, each level of their building. As a requester writing a service request, if I'm not sure what room number I need, but I can find it on the map, then I can use that map to navigate to the area that I'm looking for, select the value, and return it to the service request. This gives me an easy way to visually navigate to the right location and not have to know the room number. So I'm gonna flip over here to a quick video and show a demonstration of that. So here I have a new service request uh, that I'm gonna insert. And if I scroll down to the location field, from my detail menu, I have an option to open the map. Once the map opens, I see my floor plan. I can click on my layers tool and turn on or off different layers. So if I wanna switch from level three to level two of my floor plan, I can easily do that. Once I get to the right level of the building, I can click on the room or location that I'm interested in, take that back to my results within my map view and then return that location to the service request so that I've now updated that information. So another option outside of the facilities management is integrations. So with Maximo Spatial and the ability to integrate um, Actually, I jumped ahead here. Uh, from a work management perspective, we have one more video to show. If I'm a maintenance planner, again, sticking with that building model, 
once I have all these service requests that have been converted to work orders, I might need to send some folks out to deal with those and I wanna dispatch effectively. So if I'm sending somebody to a particular building on my campus, I wanna gather all the work that's there for them in that building at one time and not having them come back and forth to a central location. So again, from the map view, I can view open work orders and history of work orders. And even depending on my GIS setups, change the symbology of what I see. So if I come back over here to my second video, what this one is gonna show me, is again a map view. So I had a list of work orders here. And from that list of work orders, I'm able to move over to the map on the first work order. But then I can go to my results window within the map and update my map to share the same list of results as I had on my main list view of Maximo. So I've done a query of open work orders. I've come here to the map and I've visualized them as pens on my map view. I can zoom out and see work across the campus. I can zoom in and see work within a single building. And from there, I have the ability to interact with those work orders, uh, toggling through each one of them, looking at it. Again, I can turn layers on and off to view different floors of the building and just basically be able to get a spatial representation of the work that's out there for me to be dispatching to my crews. So as I go back to the slides then, I want to talk about some other opportunities that we have with Maximo Spatial as far as integrations go. So we've got a lot of use cases for that. Um, basically, because Maximo Spatial is using the Esri Map services and the REST APIs, any data stored in your GIS can be shared with Maximo, and Maximo can update that data if it's exposed as a future service. This opens up a world of options, including integrations to other ArcGIS tools like Collector or Survey123, as well as third-party vendor applications if you have offline geodatabase tools that are being used for inspection capabilities and things like that. I've also got the ability through asset swap and other processes to update related unit tables in GIS. And I've got some pretty neat uh, options with importing via the integration automation scripts to build descriptive values and translate domains. So just walking through each of those quickly, um, integrating with Esri. Again, several of our clients use Survey123 or Collector for their field inspectors to log information. That Collector is a great app for gathering field data. And via an interface with Maximo using the spatial tools, the data that's collected in the Collector app can be readily shared with Maximo, generating follow-up work orders and storing inspection results that are gathered in the field data. Another tool that we have allows us to integrate with a third-party application. So in this case, I've got a list of work orders that were generated uh, via an inspection that was performed offline by a third party, and then they've brought back into our geo database and therefore into Maximo all of the follow-up work that's needed as a result of that inspection. Moving along to the asset swap, because my GIS data is available to me in Maximo and acts just like an, a Maximo object, even though it's not stored in Maximo, if I invoke the asset swap feature, I can have a configured screen that pops up that allows me to edit GIS attributes in that swap process giving me the ability to, when I change out an asset, uh, reconfigure, update some of my GIS data with the new asset information for the, the new asset that I've installed. Um, this allows me to, again, keep my data in sync, but not having to replicate it across both systems. So I don't have to store all of this GIS data in my Maximo environment. I can just update it from there. The last use case I'm gonna look at here is auto scripting. Because this is a sync tool using the uh, Maximo integration framework, I can create a GIS sync script using the automation scripting and use that to take my JSON mapping to a whole nother level, concatenating fields, substituting values, and really building strong descriptions for my assets and locations that are generated via the integration framework and the spatial tools. So with that, um, that's just a quick 10-minute uh, run-through of some of the capabilities that you have with Maximo Spatial. 
It's a very powerful tool. Starboard implements it for a lot of our clients with great success. If you have any questions or you want to explore more about what Spatial can do for you, please reach out to us. We are about all things Maximo, and we'd be happy to answer your questions on Maximo Spatial or any of the other industry solutions. We look forward to seeing you at our next Tech 10 on Scheduler next Tuesday, and then maybe even later today for the Maximo Utility Working Group, which will start later this afternoon. Thank you again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time.